Greetings Ant Lovers, and Happy New Year and New Decade 2020. The whole world is starting a fresh new page, and indeed, so is our great collection of ants, creatures, and vivarium kingdoms we've all come to love on this channel. So to start off the year right, I asked if you guys wanted a full pet and ant room tour, so that all you watching, whether you're a returning AC family, or a newcomer, could be caught up on all the awesome, beautiful, frightening, and bizarre creatures living with me under my care. It's also an update video on all your favorite ant colonies that you might not have heard from in a while, as well as arachnids, reptiles, amphibians, and birds that have appeared on the channel before. And just a spoiler, there are even several creatures you guys don't know about yet. There are also some ant colonies that sadly are no longer with us, and issues with some that I need to talk to you about. We've got a lot of work to do today, and this episode is full of surprises, familiar faces, and all the nature you guys love in our usual 4K UHD footage. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and let's get started with our exclusive 2020 AC tour of the animals and biological worlds of our Antiverse. Here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC Fab. Enjoy! Starting from the extreme left of the ant room, we begin our tour with one of the coolest of ant worlds I've ever created for one of the oldest ant colonies on the channel. Behold, the Kingdom of the Dark Knights, our OG super colony of black crazy ants. So for those of you who haven't seen the Dark Knights new terrarium here yet, it's a multi-species terrarium with millipedes, spiders, bagworms, and other creatures inside that all depend on each other. The Dark Knights love this vivarium and have set up their nest within this driftwood hollow. This colony, which I've owned for about four years now, is unique in that it can self-perpetuate pretty much forever, with the colony creating hundreds of queens which can mate with their male siblings safely without the dangers of genetic inbreeding happening. They're an awesome colony that I look forward to keeping for decades and decades to come. By the way, you guys officially voted and named this kingdom of the Dark Knights the Dark Forest. Now speaking of multiple queens, we move on now to the Grand Palace known as Olympus. Home to the Titans, my multi-queen colony of Asian marauder ants. These ants are definitely one of my favorites due to the size of their super majors, which are just massive. The Titans are doing well and have since changed the landscape and killed off a few plants during renovations. They come to the surface in huge numbers to feed. I'm thinking of possibly rehoming these powerful ants into something larger soon. Now let's move on to one of the newest members of the Antiverse, whom some of you may or may not have seen in a recent video. Welcome to Cerulean Hollow, home of our new Sapphire Goody Tarantula. She's loving her new home, and we'll have a look at her in a second. The plants within her territories are thriving well, but she's killed the ones on the wall. I can tell she's been very busy, because she's webbed up the entire entrance of her hollow. From the back, we see her there, crawled up snugly at the bottom. By the way guys, she still needs an official name. So grab your voting fingers and click on this iCard here to vote for her official name. Thank you AC Council for your input. Next is a creature I've owned for about two years now, but I haven't told you guys about. Sorry, but I was waiting for just the right time. AC Family, meet my young Mexican fireleg tarantula known scientifically as Brachypelma bohemi. She's actually been in the background of many episodes on this channel, and I'm surprised you guys never asked about her. She's three inches long and has a huge appetite. Let's feed her the superworm now, shall we? There you go. She'll grow to a hefty six plus inches, though she's been a silent resident of the ant room for years. She still doesn't have a name as well. What should we name her? Leave your name suggestions in the comments. And now moving on to what is arguably the most famous ant colony on this channel. The Fire Nation. My savage colony of fire ants. 
I can easily say that these stinging, aggressive ants have been the most challenging and fulfilling ants I've ever kept through the years. This paludarium, created to simulate the Amazon, is called the Selva de Fuego and is full of thick tropical foliage and a river which is home to a colony of cherry shrimp, snails, mosquito rasporo fish, and even vampire crabs. Mosses have started to grow and attach in several places, somewhere beneath all the vegetation the Fire Nation lives. Today they dine on sweet jelly and this dead giant Madagascar hissing cockroach. Now this dead roach came from my new Madagascar hissing cockroach colony. Yes, yet another colony of critters I haven't yet shown you guys on the channel. I've owned this roach colony for the past couple of months now, and they're housed in this simple plastic critter crawler, where they eat a variety of veggies and fruits. These giant roaches are not to be confused with my dubia roaches, which I've been using as feeders for years. These roaches don't have wings, not even the males. I plan on making them a naturalistic setup, just like Rochella, but perhaps a bit more lavish, seeing as I plan on keeping these roaches more as pets, and perhaps only feed dead members off. Would you guys like to see a video on these neat hissing cockroaches soon? Next, a couple of weeks ago, we made this ant terrarium in a bottle. And as expected, the ants have remodeled our masterpiece to make it fit for an ant colony. The trap jaw ants inside are doing super well, and I just love them! This terrarium was the product of a challenge collab with another YouTuber friend, Serpa Design, that we decided to do for charity. You guys won't believe how much the top bidder donated for this terrarium. And just a hint, it's about the cost of a car. AC family, you guys are so generous and make me so proud to have such an amazing, caring community. Anyway, watch that video here. Now here's another thing I haven't shown you guys. This is my bog terrarium, full of living mosses, a native tree lichen, vein plants, and hydrocotyle tripartita plants. This is basically a plant propagation tank for my moss, lichen, tripartita, and vein plants. Nothing inside, just plants. I love watching the fogging machine keep the territories damp. Beside the bog terrarium, we have another newcomer. Our massive but docile Chaco Golden Knee Tarantula. This beautiful tarantula here was a gift exchange collab with another YouTuber friend, Exotic Slayer. She's been quite busy covering her whole terrarium with silk. I can understand why they make such great beginner tarantula species. She loves being outside in the open and is pretty friendly. By the way, she too needs a name. Please vote here. Moving on to yet another tarantula, we have the goddess of the Antiverse, Azula, our green bottle blue tarantula. She's covered her entire palace now with a thick blanket of silk where she resides in a back tunnel. When she first came to us, sadly, she had a problem shedding her top carapace, giving her a double face look. It eventually fell off, but guys, unfortunately, it happened again. During her last shed, she failed to shed off this headpiece. But I'm not worried. Like last time, it will likely fall off on its own. Now moving on to Skull Island, home of our ghost ants, which we acquired for our recent Halloween episode. They come out to feed, and boy, are there a lot of them. The ghost ants are trapped on this driftwood Skull Island by a moat which contains a snail and shrimp. The tank has been cycling now for many weeks and is ready to accommodate a water beast. You guys voted for a betta fish to be added here, so that's coming up soon. There were also baby tarantulas on the island, which I'm sure are still there somewhere. I just haven't seen them. Let's now look at one of the most beloved ant super colonies of the channel, the OG Golden Empire, our recovering super colony of yellow crazy ants. Now let me be the bearer of the best news for the year. The Golden Empire is thriving and just exploding in population now. In case you're new, they're actually recovering from a near fatal infection of blood sucking mites. But I'm happy to announce that there has been an explosion of eggs, larvae and pupae. I expect this colony will reach the millions in numbers they once were in just a few more months. I've been thinking though, 
Do you think we should continue to keep them in an ant farm setup like this, so we can still see their in-nest activities? Or move them to a terrarium and just watch them above ground? Let me know in this iCard here. I like that I can monitor them in their current setup, and they seem to love their formicariums. Speaking of formicariums, we now move on to my recently returned Asian bullet ants. I've got two colonies of these. Team 1, which is doing amazing in their AC hybrid nest. As you can see, there is a ton of brood and a crew of new workers. And check this out. I've never seen this species do this before. But the workers have covered this larvae with soil debris to help give it a lattice work to spin its silk for the creation of its cocoon. When it's done, the ants will remove the soil debris, revealing the finished smooth dark cocoon like these others here. I had no idea these ants did this. And here you'll see Team 2, living in their AC ant tower. By the way, about these two colonies, I think I failed to explain in their last video how my plan to keep these ants going would work. The plan was to have these two ant colonies crossbreed so they can continue living on forever. But a lot of you guys brought up the fact that after a couple generations, the colonies would be related, and there would be no more mating. My issue, which I failed to explain properly, was not so much that the males were unwilling to mate with related females, but that they were unwilling to mate with females from the same colony, with the same colony scent. That is why I decided a crossover setup, where males could cross over to the other side to mate, might actually work at getting males to mate with females, so long as the colonies stay distinct colonies. Hope that clarifies things better, and yes, a lot of you were correct in saying they would be genetically related after the next generation. But I think that should be fine, as long as after a while I add a third colony in the mix, to diversify the gene pool. Man, three Asian bullet ant colonies? That will be something. Now we move on to the great Hacienda del Dorado which was recently remade into a Pineapple Beach Paludarium. It's home to our resident trap jaw ants, named the Jawbreakers, and Vampire Crabs, which hang out in the marsh area. The trap jaw ants are shy, but come out to feed. I suspect they're mostly nesting here by the moist marsh. The waters still contain its perpetuating colony of cherry shrimp, micro raspora fish, and snails. Nearing the end of the ant room now, we have the Triple Island of Avista, the glassless open concept ant setup of the Bobbleheads, our super colony of big-headed ants. I love this cute colony. The Bobbleheads are still going strong with a great appetite, as you can see here where they dine on some chopped up superworm. Check out those super majors. The plants of the three islands that make up their archipelago are also growing well. Finally, we come to the canopy of Vortesha, the treetop kingdom of my epic arboreal colony of Asian weaver ants, we call the Emerald Empire. These ants of course create their famous hanging leaf nests which they glue together using silk from their larvae. The Emerald Empire is doing really well, eating a lot, and they recently built some new leaf nests. The dubia roaches sharing their territories are also doing quite well and reproducing on their own and the weaver ants hunt the weakest roaches and carry them up to their leaf nests to consume, like they would in the wild. And guys, look! I noticed this week that they've begun to produce male elates. They're preparing for nuptial flight season. Now you want to hear something super cool that I recently discovered? I was surprised to notice an active and thriving colony of ants living on the forest floor of Vortesha. No, they weren't pharaoh ants, thank goodness. Now I couldn't figure out where they came from, but then after looking closer at the ants, I realized, hey, these ants are familiar. So guys, remember the colony of free roaming ants that lived within the hydration chambers of one of my hybrid nests? Well, last I reported, they had disappeared one day. I highly suspect that these ants here are them. Tracing back, I believe the free roam ants moved from their hybrid nest hydration chamber down into my old termite tank. And then when my termites were murdered off by a terrible invasion of pharaoh ants. And yes, in case you were asking about the termites, I covered the death of our terminators in a previous video. I packed up the soil from the termite tank for future use, eventually using it for Fortesha. And lo and behold, 
They're Vortessians now. I suppose they're eating the scraps left behind by the weaver ants and dead roaches. It's cool that they're like the bottom feeders of the territories and don't really bother the weaver ants so much. Amazing, right? Okay, and that concludes the ant room. So let's move downstairs now. Yup, there's more. I swear I'm not a hoarder, right? Here, of course, is my tropical planted freshwater community fish tank. It's about five years old now. It contains angelfish, dwarf rainbow fish, Ruminose tetras, autosynclus catfish, and others. The vegetation is quite lush, and I don't really do much maintenance on plant grooming. I kind of like the chaotic wild growth look. I often harvest this big mass of java moss here, attached to this driftwood for my terrariums. Now here's a couple a lot of you guys have been asking about. My pair of axolotls, living in axolotl land. I'm happy to report they're bigger, fatter, and doing great. I've been hoping they would breed, but it hasn't happened yet. I also plan on moving them to a larger tank very soon. They've been such problem-free pets. Last week, of course, we saw Carnivora, my awesome carnivorous plant tank, containing pitcher plants, Venus flytraps, and some moss. But it is now undergoing a hibernation period until March or April. Beside it is Jabba the Hutt, our cute and fat Suriname horn frog. He's still a bright green color and eats a lot. I love how he will croak randomly when he hears my voice nearby. I'm also thinking of making him a new terrarium soon. Here's the nucleus, which has proven useful for the creation of new terrariums. It's my official composter for leftover fruit peels and organics, and breeding chamber for springtails and other soil creatures. I've since gotten accustomed to seeing the earthworms, but they still repulse me. But what's cool is, I've begun to find populations of some really neat creatures inside, like these small red critters. I'm not sure what they are. Do you guys know? Finally, we have Ligaya, my dragon, aka African Grey Parrot, a pretty awesome bird, super smart, and can copy messenger sounds now. <laughs> Check it out! Also, meet Hope, my broiler chicken. So get this, she was supposed to be for a feeding video for the Fire Nation, called Fire Ants vs. Dead Chick. And my request from the chicken farmer was to give me a dead chick from his batch so I could feed it to my fire ants. But there must have been a miscommunication because what arrived at my place was a living squeaking chick. Of course, I wasn't about to kill it, so I kept it. And she's huge now. These types of meat chickens sadly don't live long, but I've been doing some research to try to prolong its lifespan so it can move in with me on a farm I'm moving into in a year or so. Let's hope Hope makes it. Here's Valentino, my five-year-old sarong green tree python, a stunning snake and super healthy. He is my miracle snake because he came to me with a severe upper respiratory illness, but after medicating him by hand for several weeks, he survived, despite the vet saying he had a 10% chance of living. I love him. Finally, here is Crayola, my female veiled chameleon. She's about a year old soon, and I've relocated her out of my ant room and to my balcony where she can get some nice morning sun. She's much happier here now and appreciates the breeze and height. And that EC family is my complete pet and ant room tour. Some of you guys may have questions about what happened to some of the other creatures like the rhino beetles. Well, they sadly passed away of old age as they don't live very long. As for the lumberjacks, my teleporting carpenter ants they were doing okay, but sadly must have caught an illness somewhere because they stopped eating and eventually died. For you fans of the Platinum Dragons, I did my very best to try to grow them in different setups and offer them various diets, but they remained the same size for months. I finally ended up releasing them this week because I was clearly missing something from their care. Perhaps the species feeds exclusively on the nectar of a certain type of flower, for instance or must have honeydew from mealybugs. Not sure, but perhaps I'll try keeping another species of polyrachis again in the future. Unfortunately, die-offs and ants that don't adapt well to captivity are part of the hobby. And though it's sad, it helps us learn how to better care for the pets we love. If you've been with the channel for a while, you know that I always commit 
100% to go the extra mile to give my pets more than they need to live out their best lives. I also have a few people in my life who help me with maintenance of all of these animals. Without my helpful pet team, I definitely would not be able to keep all these creatures. And I don't recommend any of you guys have this many pets if you don't have the support for maintenance either. But I think we can all agree that life with animals, whether tiny or big, is awesome, wouldn't you say? Do you guys have any pets? Let me know your full pet list in the comments. Now that you guys know all the creatures, territories, and beasts of my Antiverse, together we are all caught up now, and we can start the channel with a fresh new page. Thank you guys for watching, and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can continue to follow more of the real life stories of all of these inhabitants of our ever growing Antiverse. It's Ant Love forever. Alrighty, C family, once again, a happy new year 2020 to you all. After creating this full ant and pet tour, I realized I'm pretty much a zookeeper at this point. But it means a lot to me that you guys love nature as much as I do and continue to watch my weekly videos. So if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications now and choose all so you get notified every time I release these high quality nature videos. Also, please remember to hit the like button every single time. AC Earner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch some extended play footage of all the creatures you saw in today's episode. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what type of water do our carnivorous plants need? Congratulations to the incarnation of boredom, who correctly answered, they need distilled or rainwater. Congratulations, the incarnation of boredom. You just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, which was your favorite creature featured in today's full pet tour? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.